to Good, after, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Movie Reviews and More. Today, following in our spotlight of important movie makers and entertainment shakers, we have the amazing Canadian Chris Ball. He's a writer, actor, producer. His latest film, Summerland, is out this Monday, September 14th, and you can find it on iTunes, Google, Vudu, and Amazon. The movie is already garnering some rave reviews and attention, but before we delve into this soon to be box office hit and cult classic, I want everyone to understand and learn about the man Chris Ball because the movie's great, but even the man is better. He is the friend that we all hope to have. He is also that man whose very essence is full of excitement, adrenaline, full of positivity, and always trying new things to break out of a common mold or stereotype. But yet, he is still humble and kind, and I'm excited to share with everyone this man who is on the precipice of becoming someone amazingly huge in the entertainment industry. Everyone, welcome Chris Ball. Yay, Chris. Hello. Hello. Chris, I like Sherry's introductions because I can't do that. Well, I, 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 it's only downhill from here. I, I could never top that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> You know, Brian's blessed us with amazing talent on the show, and I, when I believe in someone, it just, it flows, so I'm, I'm really happy that you were here, Chris. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Chris, talk about how this came about. This is a great road story, and it's one of those things where this is where, this is where I really love independent film, and you always have to, I was telling people uh, the other day for all this stuff, I'm missing watching a lot of good independent films. I think they're getting lost. So I was glad when Sherry reached out and said, we have to do something with this one because it makes sense. And I love where you went. Talk about putting this together because a lot of people don't realize independent filmmaking is harder. It's even tougher now. And so we have to do whatever we can to make sure those films get seen any way out there possible. Yeah, and it's, a, it's especially hard with COVID now, too, because, as you know, films aren't being seen in theaters. I mean, the theaters are... I hate to say it, the theaters are a way, of, a way of the past and, you know, everyone's watching movies at home and that actually makes it even harder as an independent filmmaker to have those films, uh, to have those films be released. When you're growing up as a filmmaker, of course, your dream is to have the films play in theaters. And then with, uh, with COVID, and that's initially how we wanted this film to be played, of course, and do festivals and, and, and all, the, all those things that you, that, you, that you think you want. And then COVID hit, we thought, what a perfect way but what a, what a perfect blessing in disguise to release the film during COVID when everyone's cooked up at home, watching films at home with their families. What a great place for independent films to, to get discovered if you can use COVID as, a, um, as an opportunity instead of, a, instead of an obstacle. But how the film came about was uh, my, my best friend and, and producing partner, Curtis David Harder. He's one of, uh, one of the co-directors in the film. He wrote the script years and years ago just as a one-off, uh, he wrote the script for fun, thinking like, we're never gonna get a chance to do this. It's a road trip movie, you know, filming, <laughs> filming a movie in one location is hard enough, let alone actually on the road. And so he wrote it for fun and not knowing, like, he didn't know who was gonna be in it or anything like that. He sent the script to me and the script was so close to my life already. It was amazing, Brian. I was like, this script is my life. I have to do this. Like you know everything with just the character i was like i was like i have to do this like we have to so we kind of put it off it was just one of those projects we wrote for fun we put it off for and every summer we would we would go to fernie we would go to my family's place in fernie and we would work on the script just for fun like it was and, and i think there's something you get an authenticity with the story there when you write the script not from a place of okay, how can we make a marketable movie to make money, to appeal to the masses? Those are all important things to do as well when you're making a film. But when you come at it from a place of just writing it for fun, that's where I think a really lovely story comes. And it wasn't until years later, once we actually got enough experience and contacts and, uh, in the industry that we finally felt like we were, we were able to do it uh, by actually just renting an RV with our friends and going on the road and making the movie that we wanted to make. Well, and that's the thing, Chris, you said you wanted to make a movie that was accessible to everybody. And it really is, you know, it's a movie that the guys can hang out, watch and reminisce about, oh, I did that or I want to do that. It's a movie parents would enjoy. It's a movie young kids, girls would enjoy, you know, the music festival. Um, 
but anybody that goes to see Summerland, I don't know if it's better to watch the making of the movie first or after, <laughs> because even that in itself is a movie, yeah. like well, everything. And you can tell that you genuinely enjoyed um, everything that you did. Yeah, and, and the making of the film, we knew from the start that it was, we have to document how we're making the film because it's almost as exciting as the film itself. And that's why, we, that's why we're releasing these behind the scenes episodes every week to give people a, a window into not only how we made the film, but also um, to, to show, I, I don't want to say how easy it is because it's not, it's very, very hard, but to show that anyone can do it. I mean, the camera we shot the film on, you can buy that camera at Best Buy. You know, the sound, like it, it, we, anyone with just with just a good story and you know and six friends can rent an rv and, and go on a road trip and make a movie and that's why we really wanted to to show the behind the scenes story of how the film came about well and and i learned that you had no permits and this this comes back to you being you know on the cutting edge, you know, adrenaline, why not try it? You know, you did everything without permits. You, you snuck into avenues and, you know, it, it's really fun. My favorite part though, was when uh, one of the, your friends spoofed a friend of yours, who's also a movie maker and pretend he was a customs agent because <laughs> we've all been asked those questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because cr crossing the border um, in an RV filled with filmmakers and camera <laughs> equipment was like something out of a horror movie. So uh, we had, we, but luckily we had the, um, the film festival, or the, sorry, the music festival tickets that we were going to do. And so we showed that and luckily we, we, did get, we did get through just fine. I don't know how much about this I want to talk about in public, but it was, uh, we were fine. But then we called uh, one of our other producers that we were staying with in Vegas. And yeah, we pranked him pretending to be one of the border agents and asking all this <laughs> and, and stuff and uh it's really it's a really really funny video because we, we totally got him too because we uh what we, we none of us talked to him for an hour as we were going through the border so we knew he was freaking out but uh but yeah and and it, th those kind of little behind the scenes videos that we posted like it really does show how much fun we had making this movie and there's a certain i think there's like an authenticity that you get by making a movie that way instead of like shooting it in a studio or shooting it, there's a certain element of, if you're gonna do a road trip movie, you gotta go on the road, you gotta do it. You, there's a certain element of those, those uncontrollable elements that make the road trip movie what it is. You know, the other thing about this is that RV sales are up. I know this because I've been talking to Are them. they? Really? Yes. <laughs> yes, because more people have been wanting to get out, to get off the grid. Right, I, yeah. Then I was talking to Bolas, the original RV, they go back to 1933 in the US. It was like the silver one. The one that you had, I always wanted the Gulfstream. I stick, I think I still want one for the property because it's fun being in an RV. But um, but also we turned it ours into a mobile cellular repair shop. Believe it or not, we took out the bed, oh. all of that. So you imagine, very interesting. Sherry, one of my other previous lives, obviously. <laughs> but it was yeah. one of those. But it was Man. one of those things where being in an RV, shooting it the way you did. It's very creative. It's not always easy to shoot that that way. Yeah, I, I mean, I got to be honest. That 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 RV was that RV was a piece of work. I think like something broke on it probably every week. You've, if you've had an RV, you know how it is. Like it was it was constant work. There was one part where like there's the the leveling system. There's like these posts that come yeah. down to level the RV. That broke when we were in the middle <laughs> of the. Day. We were stranded for like three days. And so it was definitely, it was definitely an adventure, but like we just incorporated it. Like just, we just, you just had fun. You see, you gotta, you gotta have fun with it. And that's the, you could only like, you could only do that on a movie like this where there's no schedule. I mean, there was a schedule, but there's no, like we could take a break for two hours and rewrite a scene. If one of the actors wasn't comfortable, like, Hey, I just, I'm not, I don't like this dialogue. Can we work on this? We'd spend two or three hours working on a scene and then we just, you know, just shoot it when we get around to it. There's no, you know, there's no overtime. We're not, you know, it's like we could stay an extra day in a location if we wanted to, if we wanted to film more stuff. And so being by, by living in the, in the RV, it allowed us to have more freedom to do that kind of stuff. So when you're living in the RV for that long, you know, they often say, you know, if you were mice, one of one have been eaten by now. Did you guys become better friends or, you know, are you like, I need my space? 
Oh, both, <laughs> both, hundred percent, both. It was like it was like you become at first you're like yeah, and this is like this is great. We're gonna be best friends, and then you're like we hate each other, and then it's like a roller coaster. But then by the end of it, you become better friends by going through all of the like all that crazy stuff. And we did we we um the the girl in the movie Maddie Phillips who plays the other lead. Uh, we gave her like the master bedroom, so she had her own. She like had her own space because she was in an RV with five guys. So she Chivalry had the is not dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and then we all crammed like up in the front side, in the front of the RV. So, we tried to be gentlemen. <laughs> you know, talk talk about the casting. What was that like? Did you know who you wanted? Yeah, this. Uh, so everything with this, like everything in this film, we we knew you you couldn't do it the conventional way, where you go through a casting agent and try to find. I mean, you're going to be living in the RV with these people for six weeks. So Rory Saper, who's one of my best friends in real life, um, we worked with him in a couple previous films, uh, and we've we've known him for years. And uh, and then Noah and Carly, everyone behind the scenes, we were all really good friends. And Maddie. Phillips, um, she was really good friends. She did a movie with Rory. So she, um, they were really good friends. And he convinced her to come on board somehow by you know, saying you'd worked with us before, we're not crazy. And, uh, and, I, and their, I think their chemistry really shows in the film. And then I think Rory and, I's, Rory and I have a natural chemistry because we're really good friends. And then we had another friend of ours who was basically like a producer and a chef. Like he, he just took care of us the entire, the entire trip by cooking us amazing vegan food all the time. And uh, so it was like really just the six of us, two, two people doing camera and sound, me, Rory and Maddie, the three cast members. And then like our producer slash master chef, we call him. But whoever wasn't in the scene was doing sound. So like, if I wasn't in the scene, I was like holding the boom pole doing sound. Is, is that um, Casey McPherson you're referring to? Because yes. that was so funny when you watch the closing credits, he's in charge of catering. Yeah. <laughs> he's a unit producer. <laughs> you're yeah. like, man, oh man, you guys just broke the mold showing you don't need hundreds of people doing it. You know, like you said, if it's a passion project, you all flow, it all happens and it gets done. And that's why so many people are going to enjoy it. Can I, Brian, I've, I've got a few reviews of the movie, if I can read them. Um, Josh Davis of Pulp Culture Leftovers, he said, Summerland is an above average coming of age movie with three capable um, stars, but Chris Ball is a standout. Great cinematography and great music. And again, the cinematography is amazing. Um, the, in San Francisco, you know, when you did the waterfall jumping. Yeah. Um, Darren Lewis, Lucas, I'm sorry, Movie Reviews 101, he says, this is a wonderful coming of age story that tells us the importance of making movies, even if you're going in separate directions in life. And um, finally, Norman Gidney from Film Threat, he says, easily one of the best movies of 2020. And head to Summerland, you won't be dis disappointed. And I know that Brian and I feel the same way. Um, it, it is very delightful. It's wonderful. And, you know, I think you might, I think it will be a cult classic. You know what I mean? How, um, you know, what was it? Clerks was for some generations and uh, Diner for others. I think this could be one. And, and like Brian says, a lot of people, a lot of guys, a lot of girls are probably going to start doing stags and stagettes on <laughs> motorhomes because why not? So yeah, yeah. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah, the trick is to not call it a cult classic because you never know it's a cult classic until after when it becomes a cult classic. So. Okay, you don't call it. <laughs> but yeah, and I liked your product placement because it still shows that you're loyal to where you grew up, you know, the Fernie Brewing Company. Oh, you noticed that. You noticed yeah, the yeah, yeah. Brewery. And, yeah. Uh, and yeah. Um, anyone watching, if you can see uh, Chris Ball's Instagram and his Facebook, you like bridges, don't you? <laughs> He's doing these um, major hang from bridges, and and no, he's yeah. your guy's guy. That if he I, I used to be an adrenaline guy. junkie, well, just <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Chris, did I, I love the long shots? Did you use a drone for those? Yeah. Yeah, we had a we had a little little DJI drone, and uh, yeah, I mean the the. The, the drone the drone was a must, was a must have just because we wanted to show the location we wanted to show that we were actually in uh, everywhere that we visited we were in San Francisco we're in Joshua Tree you know like we like we didn't fake any of it and, and uh, so the drone was essential for that this reminded me of a great um, uh, before I say this did you enter it in any film festivals at all or no 
We did. Yeah. We, we, uh, we entered in, in some festivals and then kind of right in the middle, like right as we were starting to hear back from festivals, uh, COVID hit. So we, we entered it, we were really hoping on Tribeca and then, uh, yeah, which is in April, but then, you know, um, yeah, COVID hit in March, we kind of made the decision to, instead of, you know, waiting around for a year, because the, the film festival process takes a long time. You get, it's about a year. And it's also, you have to be very strategic too. Like if you, you can't just apply to every festival, because then what if you get in one festival, you have to pull out. And then it's, it's a really, I hate to say it's really, it can be a really political process. So it's actually like, we made the decision kind of early on so when we didn't get into the festival that we, one of the festivals that we wanted, we said, you know what, let's not wait a year to see if it's getting, to see if it gets into any festivals. Let's just, let's do the self-release. Like everything about the film is, um, we did it ourselves, right? We should, we raised the money ourselves. We shot it ourselves. It only makes sense that we finished the mark. We did the marketing ourselves and released it ourselves that way from, you know, from day one to, to, uh, in two days on Monday, when it comes out, everything's been done by us. You know what I mean? It, it kind of just made sense. I'm glad you did that because I keep, I have to, this is interesting. I have to always remind people that I used to pick films for Hollywood film festival and Southern Women in Film and Television and Boyd International Film Festival in Wisconsin. And I, you know, and I love, I always tell people, never mind Sundance, you don't want your film to get lost because this film would have definitely gotten lost in a yeah. film festival. So I'm glad you guys did that. So this is where I like to take these films and say, here's a film, take a look at this. Let's not let it get lost. So you guys did the right thing because it definitely would have gotten lost or buried, unfortunately. And, and it bothers me because I found a lot of great films that we chose and it didn't make the cut. And yeah. so we would fight for a lot of them. And then Sherry Edie Hands was one of the films I fought for. And I was, I was like the last one standing. I'm like, no, we got to have this film in or else. I'm putting my foot down. And a lot of people don't know what it's like to pick those films behind the scenes. This would have been one of them that I would have probably have fought for because it needs to be seen of what people went through to creating it. Because what Sherry is said, did said that it reminded me, it was sort of like how Kevin Smith did do Clerks. Mm -hmm. It falls into that genre, so it makes sense. Yeah, but, and not, and you're absolutely right, not every film blows up like Clerks. There's a lot of good films that play at festivals that are never, that are never seen again. And also there's, you know, it can be really disheartening if you don't get into a festival, a lot of filmmakers, you know, they like they apply to Sundance or, uh, or, uh, Tribeca or whatever it is and they don't get in and it's like what do you do now that can that it's you know your film success shouldn't hinge on getting into a festival and that and and so you're absolutely right we think we made the right decision by by showing like you can you know if you're if you're hopefully clever enough that we we think we've been and just really put in enough work and and just and and really just just do the work you can get the film out there yourself if um, and it's been a, it's been like a masterclass in, in social media marketing and all of those things, but it's been fun. It's like, if you really love the film and the film has a good story to tell all of your marketing and everything kind of falls into place. Like that's, you know, it, it all kind of just, it kind of starts to, it, it, it's better than when you, you, you know, if you get a film in a festival and then it gets picked up, they take care of the marketing for you, which sometimes can be great, but then sometimes your story that like, your attachment to the film can get lost because some company takes the film, they hire some guy to make a trailer for it, right? As you know, they hire some guy to build a poster for it because they need to make a poster that looks like this other, a poster for another movie that was successful last year. So it has to look yeah. like that. And, and the, the personal story behind the film gets lost in all the marketing. And by, I think by doing it yourself, you stay true to, to why you made the movie. Your trailer is very good. Your trailer made me really want to see it because oh, I yeah. people, um, submitting things to me and said, okay. And, and I watched them all. I will yeah. watch them all. But people don't realize I'm still watching, no matter what, two and a half movies a day, whether yeah. I'm traveling or not, a day. I'm actually watching more than that, but it's tough to do that. And then the last thing you want to do when you're tired is, is it fair of me to watch this film that I know nothing about? Because remember, I'm not getting trailers. I see your trailer and automatically, I want to watch it because it mm. was good. But a lot of times they just send me the link and they have a little description. I'm like, okay, I'll watch it now and whatever. But it's not, you got, sometimes you got to be in a mood. This yeah. made you want to go out, not only really buy an RV, but go on a road trip off the grid. The only thing I didn't want to do is, is, is lose my phone or my <laughs> card and jump off and 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh it, well th well thank you so much Kurt, uh, Kurt Harder one of the one of the directors he cut the trailer and he's 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 really good at it. it's, I mean, it's that's what it, he he shot the movie he's he's really good at what he does um the trailer it's it's funny because like I, you want I think just just seeing the hook of like this kid like Bray the character I play who's catfishing this guy falls in love with him and is on his way to the music festival to meet him like that's a good enough I, I think it's like you want to see the movie just to see how that plays out because you're like there's no way this is going to work out right like and that's I think you know what we kind of wanted to get out, get across in the trailer but then you don't want to spoil too much obviously and you want to keep it but you know you want to keep it fun trailers are trailers are they're tricky but that's the thing they always say road trip movies it's more about the journey than the destination and honestly it just went by so quickly for me like I was just I was really enjoying your trip you know yeah. what I mean? And there was so much you could have done. But the best thing, like Brian said, it tweaked our interest is because everything was believable. It wasn't corny. It wasn't over, done over again. You know, everything you did was was believable, but it had that little tweak, like you said, catfishing and using a female rather than yourself. And I just learned about catfishing. So anyways, <laughs> I don't know if that's a growing thing during this this COVID time right. now because you know if someone's in another country, it's like, oh, still can't meet you. It's it's a great it's a great place now because they can't meet anyway. But anyway, it was um, just a, a really unique twist that you implemented, and yeah, it was great. And and that young lady, she's just she's beautiful. She's great. And uh, the the one boy though, um, you met him. He picked you up hitchhike. I'm sorry, I'm saying too much. No, I no, thought okay. it was Eric Roberts. I really did at first. I don't know if he gets like that all young, the time. Like a young Eric Roberts? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, wow, that's totally a young Eric Roberts. So yeah, he was done well. Well, the, and the, the, the road trip movie trope, like the best part about the road trip movies that I love is the, the funny characters that they meet along the way. And um, I think, I, I think if I know what you're talking about, the guy who's, who's also in the drug deal earlier is played by Dion Arnold and he's a stand up comedian. And there's, he's and he's, so funny he's like he How was so you... funny oh. we, <laughs> well, he's, he's, you know it's okay so he's a uh, i'll tell you he's a friend of ours and uh we put him in the movie when we shot in calgary for two weeks in the drug deal scene and he was so good when we were in la and we were rewriting the scene for the ending where i don't want to spoil it but our characters have to hitchhike to get to the music festival and we're like, who's going to like, you know, like how, what, what are we going to do now? We actually ended up writing him back into the movie because he was so good or like earlier. Oh yeah. That whole scene. And I can't say it, but you, oh my goodness, the audience, you'll love it when he appears for the first time because his mode of transportation, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just the essence of him was genius. Yeah. So yeah. well played, well played. For sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Kristen, do you, because uh, I, you know, normally I always watch end credits for stuff because sometimes they go by fast, sometimes they don't. You have to watch the end credits like you're watching a Marvel movie because there's things at the end. And I always tell people, especially when they go to a theater, not that this is in certain theaters, it's in different places playing now, watch all the way to the end. Because I stopped it one time because it just cut off and then I went back to play it again. I'm like, good thing I went back to play it because I saw it until the very end. Mm -hmm. and and people don't realize sometimes there's things at the very end that's why as movie people wait until the end because we're so used to having little surprises here and there oh yeah and it's uh it's so i think I, I think marvel's done a pretty good job with uh hopefully keeping people in 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 the credits it's, but it's funny you say that because you know originally they used to they used to do those little post-credit stingers right at the very very end of the credits now they do they play a little bit of credits then they do the clip then the rest of the credits but um yeah we we did it yeah right at the very end because it's like you know if, if you're if you're if you want to stick around for just a little bit here's your, like here, here's your reward just a little bit maybe it's a little you know just a like a little ex little something extra well, and I hope down the road, you know, you all can come together and do something again. I don't know if it's because I, you all just the, you know, you were very, all in sync and it was comfortable. Like I said, it was never an uncomfortable or awkward movie. You all were, you know, it was, it was quite delightful. And like you said, with COVID, you know, you're the blessing because everything is just negative and difficult and no, this is really nice. And it, and it's for every generation, every, it, it's wonderful. Um, but Chris, um, Chris, how can someone like me help you promote it? Um, aside from social media, is there anything I can do? Cause I, I do believe in it and it's great. 
Yeah. I mean, honestly, uh, social media is the best, the best platform we've found. Like we did this crash. We've done a crash course in marketing just from what we've been doing and Facebook, Instagram, honestly, the, the biggest thing seems to be like where most of our views are, are coming from is Instagram. It seems to be where everyone seems to be sharing content these days is not just Instagram, but so it, all social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, like that's how people seem to be sharing movies that they love. It's like, you know, it, it's like sharing, it's all the behind the scenes content behind the movie, right? It's not just you know, it, the, the days of like, Hey, do you want to, you know, get a ticket and go see this movie together? It's not like that anymore. It's like, Hey, here's a trailer. Here's a clip. Here's a behind the scenes, you know, a behind the scenes episode or whatever here, you know, here's a funny meme. Like what, what we found most is, like, is that by engaging with people on social media, that seems to be what is getting the most, the kind of the most traction. Yeah. Most. Then they feel a part of it, I think. And, and yeah. like, it's interactive. So I know that that's makes sense. That's yeah, really whereas, smart. It's not about video views anymore. You know, it, mm. it, where it, it used to be about like, okay, does, you know, we've got to get like a million views in the trailer or what, or whatever it is now. It's like, it's more important to have, like, we would rather have a thousand followers on Instagram where we know we can see like four to 500 of them actually engaging and watching the content and sharing it. We'd rather have that than have like 20,000 followers that don't do anything, right? Like there's no, you know, gone are the days of the, the videos, you know, trailers going viral with million, million hits. It's like, you just want something, you just want something that's good that people connect to and engage with and share with their friends. So just, it's all, it's all just, just word of mouth. And if you've got a good story and if, if people are into it, like it, you know, that's, that's what people share. People share the connection and, and the love for it. Here's what I've always said. It's that, you know, it's, the, it's not about those followers, it's about those people viewing it. That's why I only go by views for movie reviews and more. You'll never hear me say followers because like you just said, you said two things, movie theaters are dead. I'm so tired of saying that because I've been saying it since 2016. Yeah. Saying it. And look where we are. So I would say it again on that. But also those followers, they may follow you for five minutes. You turn out and walk out the door, they unfollow you, right? Yeah. So yes, it's about sharing that content. And the reason why I waited till the last minute to see it, because I had five other films I had to see before. Luckily, yours was better than the other four that I saw. You know? <laughs> that's, that's a good thing, because again, I'm getting so many links. I don't, I don't, there's not a trailer. I don't know what I'm seeing. I just yeah. see it surprise me. So this was a nice surprise. The funny thing was, I got a chance to see your trailer. I only wanted to see once, because unless I go to the movies, I'm not seeing any trailers. Right. I, Here's the movie. Watch it. Tell us what you think. To who do you want to talk to? Yeah, unless people send it to you. Tell me unless anything about it. it. Yeah, yeah. So, Chris, what do you have coming up next? Do you have another project that you're working on? Um, yeah, to be honest, COVID was just a nice break to really just focus on to focus on wrapping this up and uh, just to make sure that we got the the release that that we wanted, which I could not be more proud. It comes out in it comes out in two days. I think we've got a lot of good traction. Uh, and we've got tons of content to come out afterwards too. So that's really, that's really what we're focusing on is like, you know, even though the movie's out, we still have to be engaged. We want to be engaged. We've got tons of content behind the scenes content. We're going to be doing Instagram live videos, all that kind of stuff with the cast and the directors. So I'm, I'm really, I'm not jumping into anything right away. I really, I'm really, I'm staying focused on this. Um, but I will say we're writing a sequel. <laughs> oh, good, good. Um, yeah. Chris, I know that um, you've studied quite a bit about um, the, the um, changing things that had happened in the past in San Francisco, you know, and you, I'd seen a post of Har Harvey Milk, and I'm wondering, I know you're young, but would you ever want to do a biography of him? Because you're very clever, you could even play him, you're very young, but we know technology can age us. So I, I you, you know, you just have a very good visual and a mindset for delivering what we can receive uh, and appreciate yeah. better i i think there there's a good there's a really good movie about harvey milk called milk and i i would not want to tarnish <laughs> that movie. no 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 you wouldn't but i think I, you'd be able to do another <laughs> avenue of it you know I, yeah you know. but it's funny you say that because i worked with dustin lance black who wrote milk i worked with him and cleve jones who was harvey milk's protege i worked with him on a tv show a couple years ago about the gay rights movement and that's really what um what encouraged like what really changed my life and encouraged my love for gay culture and gay history and i was able to incorporate that into the film where we go to san francisco and that scene i'm not even acting in that scene i'm actually just telling them like 
what, you know, how San Francisco became the gay history or the gay capital of, of America. And that is something that, that I love, that I love so much. I, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to do, I wouldn't want to do a movie on it because I think it's more important. I think what's more important is taking his legacy and in Harvey Monk's legacy and incorporating it into films these days and normalizing it. That's more what I'm interested in is, is normalizing gay characters and, uh, and just in, in, in a way that's accessible to everybody. You did, and you did that in this movie, and I was thinking about how you normalize that, and also your friend who's an exchange student, you know, which is also often very unique to meet someone in that position. Mm -hmm. You've, you know, normalized that, you know, each person had their own unique, um, you know, existence in the show, and it was, it was really good. Um, but I don't know if I'm giving it away. There's a scene, are you at the liquor store? I don't understand what happened. <laughs> Remember uh, the guy with the hockey mask or yeah, I I'll, okay, I'll uh okay, really quick. So that uh he, he's there's a scene where we encounter uh I won't spoil it too much, but we we encounter a robbery and this guy's robbing a store with a very peculiar object. And how that came was that actually happened to me and my best friend. We were at a party and this guy robbed a 7-Eleven with a two by four. And then he got like a case of beer or whatever. Then he went back to the party that he was at and like started handing out beers to everybody. So obviously he was, he was arrested very quickly, but we just thought that was so funny. We're like, we have to put that in a movie one day. So we did. So that's, that's, that's where that, that's where that comes from. It was like, like, what is the weirdest thing you could rob a grocery store with? Okay. So. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I didn't want to say this because I figured that you were writing a sequel to this because in my head, I already know how it starts. <laughs> <laughs> well i i don't want to i don't want to give anything away but it's it's uh yeah we're definitely definitely writing a sequel more, more so just because we had so we had so much fun doing it and uh yeah just like why 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 not <laughs> we i like how we've green we've green lit the sequel before the first movies even come out <laughs> <laughs> no it's good but but your cinematography was amazing like i said people that want to go on holidays that can't you covered everything you know you covered the city the country you know camping you, yeah it's it's great you're you're you covered a lot of territory for no permits <laughs> well done you might have to get permits for the next one i think we're, we might we might be a little we might be on the radar a little bit after this now yeah <laughs> chris what do you hope the audience gets out of seeing this film um, the biggest, the biggest reason I wanted to do the film was when I was growing up, uh, there were no gay characters in films uh, other than if they were the comedic relief, if they were the side characters or, the, or just a, a stereotype or a trope. The biggest thing for me personally was to play a character that's just gay and just, just cuz like it's just, and just really, really normalize that and normalize those differences and tropes and and uh, uh, I, I, I think the biggest thing I want people to get out of it is that there's like there's there's gay characters in this film that are just themselves. They're not stereotypes. People of like there's so many different characters in this film of all walks of life, as Sherry said. That uh, like we're all we're all we're all kind of outsiders in our own way. And the three characters that go on the road trip together are outsiders. And they all learn something about themselves by being outsiders together. And I think if we could, if we could do more, if we could do more of that, more of the road trips, more of the, you know, more have more freedom to do that, get away from our screens and spend more time together. I think that's, I think that'd be something to look forward to if I was, if I was watching this movie. Get me to go, go outside and go on a road trip. Terry, you get the last question. No, I just, I hope everybody goes and sees, um, can watch, there's, there's like I mentioned, iTunes, Google, Vudu, and, and Amazon, so I, it's, it's a fun movie if you want to watch it alone with friends, you know, it, it's a great movie. I, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And Chris, I'm going to leave you with that. So our movie reviews and more, our rating system is the four E's. So you get out of the four E's. It's entertaining, it's engaging, and it's exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Awesome. I love that. Well, thank you so much. All right. So with that, Chris Ball, Sherry Nelson, glad everybody came about. Everybody's got to go out and see Summerland any way that you can see it on all the social media devices, because this is the new way to see things. You can't always see them in the theater anymore, right, Chris? So we have to find different ways. So this is one of the different ways. 
So I highly recommend it. Sherry definitely Nessie recommends it because she went and found you guys, which is good. So with that, if you see someone without a smile, this is Movie Reviews and More. Please give them one of yours because the world needs it. And we will see you next week. And Chris, thank you so much. And Sherry, good find on your end. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Sherry, so much.